Hi everyone, so this is a supplement to lecture seven on uh, arrays in Python. And uh, today I'm gonna to cover two examples. Uh, first, just go through some examples of some basics of arrays, um, including lists and tuples uh, and numpy arrays. Uh, and then I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, examples for, of math problems uh, using arrays that are similar to what you have on your homework. Um, so uh, let's get started. Um, so the first thing I want to, to just point out here uh, is that there are lots of, there's lots of documentation uh, on arrays. Python has documentation on lists and on tuples. Um, there's this nice Stack Overflow uh, article. If you've never uh, used anything uh, on Stack, if you've never looked up anything on Stack Overflow before, um, I highly recommend it. So Stack Overflow is this great website. Um, where you have all these questions and answers, and you can, you know, put in uh, Python arrays versus tuples, okay? And um, I actually find just Google is the best. So Python arrays tuples Stack Overflow, okay? And there's this great article here on what's the difference between lists and tuples, uh, if that's confusing to you, okay? And the way it's organized is someone asks a question. And then someone answers it, and the answers get upvotes. It's like Quora if you've used Quora before, but for technical articles. Anyway, so highly rec highly recommend these different pieces. Um, let me go ahead and forgot to mark that on top. Okay, um, and if if there's any further questions you have, all right. So uh, let's go through here and talk about just the difference between a list and a tuple. Uh, so, uh, like we said er uh, earlier in, in the lecture, you can see in the video or in class. Uh, we talked about the idea of wanting uh, lists of variables, all right? And so uh, in Python, we have two different ways of storing uh, uh, different sequences. Uh, one is called a list and the other is called a tuple. And you create them by adding a bracket. You create a list by adding a bracket around a com comma separated series of numbers, okay? So it's important to get the syntax right. You have to put a bracket, okay, and you put commas around, all right? And so here I'm making a list. Um, a tuple is created very similarly, but you put parentheses around, all right? And I'll talk about the difference in just a second, all right? The way that you then go back and access each of these values, okay? You can access the entire thing as a quantity, okay? So if I say I can uh, assign them to each other, so I could create a B list and make it equal to A list, okay? And that would uh, make a copy of B uh, of B list um, that that I can then uh, use and edit. Okay, um, but if I want to go ahead and access the individual elements of the list, then I need to to use some kind of index. All right, and so what I do is I put a square bracket and then I put a number in there of the index, and the index of the list starts counting at zero. So this is element zero, one, two, three. Four. So if I wanted to run this, you'll see that if I print element two, that's going to print the third element in the list, which is six. Okay, so let me go ahead and run that. Um, we get an error below from something else. But if you look uh, here, I have, you know, list zero, one, two, that gives me two, four, six, eight, ten, just like I thought. Okay, a tuple is exactly the same. I can access it with a square bracket, all right, uh, doing the same thing. Okay, so what is the difference between a list and a tuple. There's two main differences, okay? The first is that a list is uh, what's called mutable, which means its elements can be changed. So what I'm doing here is taking element zero and assigning it to be 12, okay? Uh, and then printing that out. And you can see here that that printed a uh, list zero is now 12, okay? And if I were to print um, this whole you know thing again here, you'll see, I'll, I'll come do that down here, I'll put that in, run that guy, and you can see now instead of starting at two, it starts at 12, okay? So I can change the elements of a list, all right? Um, but tuples are immutable, meaning that I can't change them. And so you notice I'm getting an error here, and that says tuple object does not support item assignment, right? So that's uh, the first main difference. Um, and that's really the main difference in the language um, the next difference is sort of a style difference, a difference in how we use them. Uh, lists are uh, what are called homogeneous, 
Um, so, oh, I even made a mistake there. Uh, uh, that should be a list. Okay, so a list is uh, with the square brackets is usually a list of things that are the same, okay, the same kind of object. So uh, their entries are, you know, so in this case, I have like a list of birthdays. Um, tuples are usually heterogeneous. So they're usually something like a pair of things. So this is, you know, a uh, type of residence, a house, and then an address. Uh, one, two, three, four, east, 300 west, okay, something that would be uh, an address, okay? So that's the difference between them, but uh, other than that, um, you know, they're accessed uh, similarly, um, and then remember, they're defined differently. So that was my little mistake here, okay? I defined this, uh, you know, I need to define that with a square bracket to make a list. Okay, so let's uh, do a little practice for a second. Why don't you stop uh, and do a little practice and create a list on your own called my list, which has the first prime numbers, or first five prime numbers in it, okay? See if you can define that. Okay, so let's check how you did. Um, if I create a list called my list, I give it square brackets, I go two, three, five, seven, eleven. Okay, remember the commas, remember the square brackets. How do you get out one of those numbers? Suppose I want to get out the five. My list of the second element, zero, one, two, is the five. So I can print my list of two run that. Oh, I need to comment this out or it's going to keep giving me that error. Okay, there it was, five. Okay, so uh, now let's move on. Uh, so when, when we want to do numerical methods, when we want to do math, uh, we uh, it's very convenient to use uh, the NumPy module because there are lots of things in the uh, NumPy module that uh, uh, we can that are predefined math functions that will allow us to do lots of interesting uh, things, including linear algebra. And so we want to be able to define uh, arrays and matrices uh, in this NumPy module using this NumPy module. And so NumPy has another kind of list or sequence uh, that they call an array, which is uh, really valuable. Um, and so to make an array, you call this function numpy.array. And so it's a function, so you're calling, you know, it with parentheses, okay? And the argument of the function, you give it a list. So if you put a list in there, 3, 6, 9, 12, okay, it will make a numpy array. And if I run this guy, um, let me put a little, to avoid any of the shenanigans below, um, let me just run this. Oh. And you can see the first mistake I made here is I didn't up here import numpy. So I got to do that first. Sorry about that. Okay. All right. So now I run that. And what does it do? It prints a numpy array and it prints my whole array for me. Okay. 3, 6, 9, 12. Great. Okay. So now numpy has um, many ways that we can define an array without having to type all these numbers in by hand. And as you can imagine, if I wanted to make an array of four, that's easy. But if I want to make an array that's 50 long, that's really a pain, okay? So they have a bunch of different ways. One way is through this function called zeros. So zeros defines an array that's the length, this length, so it has a length of five, um, but it uh, is filled with zeros. That's useful, okay? So, uh, if I use numpy.ones, that gives me an array that's all filled with ones, that's this length. And then if I multiply by a number out front, it will fill, you know, I'll have three times all those ones and it'll fill it with threes. Okay. So let me just look at that and show you how that works. So I run those guys. Okay. And print. And lo and behold, I get five zeros and six threes. Okay. So that's pretty convenient. Um, the last, let's see, a couple other things. So I can uh, use this function called uh, a range or a range. Um, and this will give me a range of integers that starts at four and uh, stops at 10, but non-inclusive of 10, okay? Uh, which is what I mean by this bracket here, all right? And so that means it'll go four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is just like the range function uh, that uh, we have in 
uh, for loops, okay, uh, except this is creating an array out of it. So I think that's what the A stands for, an array range. Okay, so if I run this guy, um, it's going to give me a range of integers. So I'll run that, look down here. Here it goes, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All right, uh, and so the same rules for the different things here. So this is my start, this is my stop, and if I remember right, uh, this is also my increment, so I can make it count by twos, and there, there it is, four, six, eight. Okay, so just like we learned with loops last time, okay, and if you need a refresher of that, you can go ahead and watch the video from last time. Um, and then this one is super useful too, linspace. Uh, linspace gives you a linearly spaced set of data, but now it will use floats instead of integers, uh, and so you can have decimals in between. So if I want to have a range from 4 to 10, where I sort of evenly space out that data, I keep hitting the microphone, hopefully that's not too, uh, it doesn't make a huge thump. Um, but if I want that sort of linearly spaced data, I can use linspace, okay? Um, and if you come down here and look at that, that'll go 4, 6, 8, 10. Notice the dot after it uh, for um, uh, the float. If I make it only 3, uh, that would normally not, let's see, oh, I want to make it, let me make it like uh, 10. So I don't have just, uh, oh man, that made it ugly. Let me try a little bit fewer, like 7. That's exactly how many, there are 8, let me try 8. Okay, so if you see 8, now look at this piece right here. Okay, you can see it did 4, 4.85, 5.71, okay, it goes exactly from 4 to 10, okay with, uh, you know, how exactly the distance in between each of these values it needed to have eight different numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different numbers. Okay. Um, notice that linspace is a little different than a range. Okay. Linspace goes all the way to 10. So it includes the 10 here, whereas a range does not. Okay. A range is non-inclusive of that final number. Okay, uh, the last thing um, I wanted to point out here um, uh, is that uh, you can, uh, uh, oh, I want five, is that when you uh, uh, do a copy, that this copy um, is does it uh, in a way that's called by reference. So basically, if you think of, if you remember, we talked about how there is, um, uh, the value of variable, and then there has to be a place where it's stored, it's, uh, it's memory, okay? You can think of data sitting in like an ice cube tray, okay? There's a bunch of different spots where the data sits in memory, all right? And what happens when you make a copy in Python, it doesn't take that memory and make a new copy somewhere else. It just creates a new reference to that same memory spot, okay, for a numpy array. And so uh, that what that means is that when you change the X, it will also change the Y. So this is showing an example of that. Let me create a new code block here to show this. Okay, so let me go back and make this one not so annoying. Uh, six. Okay, oh, that would have been good. Six would have been the right number. See, 4, 5.2, 6.4, okay? So now let me look at this one. So I'm going to create a copy uh, where of y, y is a copy of x, okay? And so I'm going to print out x and y, all right? They're the same. So now I'm going to change the second element, uh, or the index at 2, which is actually the third element of x. So I come over here and I've changed 6.4 to 7, okay? But notice that that also changed y, okay? That's kind of weird. It's doing that because they're referencing the same spot in memory, okay? The same ice cube tray. Okay, so if I want to not change that, I have to use this function called copy. So z is equal to numpy copy of x. Okay, and now when I change x again and I print out z, they're not the same. Okay, so when I call copy, that takes the entire ice cube tray and replicates it somewhere else. And now they refer to two different, you know, oh, I'm off the camera, two different spots instead of, you know, the same spot in the array. Okay. Um, so here is a good practice to try to see if you understand. Try and create an array T, which ranges from 0 to 1, inclusive, with steps of 0.1. Okay, so, wanna, you know, hopefully you've taken a second to do that. So here's how you do it. So 
uh, which thing gives us a range from 0 to 1 with steps 0.1? That would be lin space. So I do numpy lin space, and I want to go from 0 to 1, okay? And then I need to have um, the number of steps. And if I remember right, I think it's 11 steps that I need, right, to go exactly 0.1. We can uh, check, though, and print out our T and see if I'm right. So I'll run that guy, and there you go. I, that's exactly right. So 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Well, how did I know 11? Uh, I have to know the, uh, you know, the delta t that I want, um, and delta t is going to be 1 minus 0 divided by this number minus 1. Okay, because there's that's how many spaces are in between is minus 1. So if I wanted 10, you know, I wanted 1 divided by 10, I would need 10 plus 1, which gives me 11. Okay. One more thing that I'm thinking that I don't uh, show you up here, but um, before I forget, I want to point this out. One really useful function that's a key uh, word or uh, 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 defined function in Python is the length. Okay, so you can get um, the length of an array, okay, or of a list, you know, list, tuple, or numpy array, okay, with the length function. Okay, so if I want to uh, make a variable, I'm going to call it, I don't know, uh, let me just call it um, A, all right, and it's the length of my list, okay, that will tell you how many elements are in the list, okay, so if I run that, um, uh, my list was one, two, three, four, five elements long, and you can see down here it printed out a five. It's maybe a little hard to see, so I can put length. Let me run that again. Okay, length is five. All right, if I made my list longer, out to 13, that'll tell me how many elements are there. Six. Okay, remember that this is zero, one, two, three, four, the fifth value in the index, but there are six total elements. Okay, so that counting by zero thing can be a little weird to get used to. I hope that's not too crazy for you. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, how do you make a matrix? A two-dimensional uh, matrix is really just a two-dimensional array. So an array, you know, would just be a single uh, list down the, the row, you know, one, two, three, four elements. Uh, a two-dimensional array would be a list this way and a list that way. Think a table uh, or is essentially exactly what you have in Excel, right, as a two-dimensional array of values. Um, there's different ways to make uh uh, two-dimensional arrays or matrices uh, using NumPy, um, when you define it by hand, essentially you make a list of lists. So you make a list here, you know, so let me put some spaces in here maybe to make that more explicit. So I have a first list here, one, two, okay, comma, three, four, and both of those things are lists which I put inside another square bracket with a comma, and I've made a list of a list, all right? Um, so let's look at what that looks like. It'll print out for us. There you go. A list of a list. Okay. A two-dimensional array or a matrix. Um, another way to do this is to reshape a 1D array using this reshape function um, and a 2D array uh, using this reshape function. Okay. Um, let's, I'm, I'm going to uh, let you play around with that. I, I don't think this is the most important thing to learn, but if you'd like to learn how to to reshape, um, you can do that. I actually think it'll be more important uh, when I come down here uh, in this part to talk about loops, uh, talking about that. But suffice it to say, um, this reshape function will basically take a 1D array that's all strung out and will chop it at certain points and then make, move that over, okay, and make it so that it's a two-dimensional array. And so you can take, you know, you can take your uh, 1D array here that goes from, uh, you know, 0 to 11, counting by, you know, 0 to 12, counting by 2s, but skipping, you know, non-inclusive of 12, and you can chop it up into something that's a 3 by 2, okay, uh, array using that uh, reshape function, okay. Um, and, you know, you can, I, I do it here, I put it all in one line, if you want to, you know, combine it, put your function inside your other function so that you can assign that array. Okay, that's a little bit more advanced, um, so maybe skip that if it's the first time you're doing this, but if not, 
you can go ahead and play around with this reshape function. Okay. So the last thing I want to show you is a little bit of, oh, I, have, I guess I, I guess I did talk about sizes down there. I wanted to show you two more uh, uh, things. The first is some advanced accessing elements. So sometimes it's um, you'd like to access uh, more than one element at a time. So for instance, you especially this is especially the case uh, when you're working with say matrices and you want to get a row or a column. All right. So the really useful uh, thing that Python defines is these slicing operators. Okay. So if I put a colon inside the brackets, it's going to give me all of the elements of that matrix. So let's take a look at this here. Um, let me just run this. Okay. So I create an array that has 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. So it counts by threes. Okay. And if I print X with a colon in it, it will give me back the same thing. It'll give me back the entire array. Well, you say, why is that useful? Like I said, if I have a, if I have a two dimensional array, okay, and I want to just the row, I can use this one to access just the row. Okay. Um, uh, uh, and then I can, you know, put a comma and I can access the other element of the matrix. Okay. And that's how I would get, you know, say the, uh, the values on all the rows in just the zero column. Okay. So, um, you can do a bunch of fancy things with these slicing operators. You can start at the second, you know, the element, uh, two index two. So, which is the third spot, right? So I can go zero, one, two. Okay. And so that will print nine to the end. I can go from element two to four, which will print uh, nine to 12. This one, if I put in a negative one, it'll actually give me the last, the very last element. Okay. Which is uh, really convenient. And minus two would give me the second to last one. All right. Or if I want, I can actually put a list inside of my, uh, accessing all right and get elements one two and five all right so you should play around with these slicing operators um, uh, to see how it works um, so let's uh, maybe do a practice example here so suppose I have uh, this uh, matrix B that I make using this reshape all right and what it is is it just counts up to zero up to eight and reshapes it into a three by three matrix okay and suppose I want to get the value of seven uh, from the matrix and print it to the console. Okay, so how do I do that? So for uh, uh, remember, I put the square brackets in. Let me print B and I'll print another one down here. Okay, this is a good practice to do. Okay, so suppose I want to get seven out. Um, I need to go uh, rows and columns. So what's going to happen is to access a 2D array, I need row, comma, column. Okay, so what row am I on? I'm on zero, one, or let's see, zero row, one row, two row. So I'm going to be on the second row, and which column? Zero, one, one column, and let's print that and see, and voila, I get seven. Okay, so to access a two-dimensional array, um, I need to have a comma-separated list of the two indices, okay, one for each dimension uh, of that thing, all right? Um, here's a practice with slicing. So let's print X here. Okay. So in slicing, this says use slicing to extract and define a new array Y with the values X 10 or 8, 10, 12, and 14. So I want to get this one, 8, 10, 12, and 14. So what I'm going to want to do is start at the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 spot, 5, 6, 7 spot. Okay. So I want to access four to seven. Okay. Um, but notice here that this is going to skip the last element. This is just like all the ranges in Python. So I don't want to skip the seventh. I want to include the seventh. So I'm going to go to the eighth element of the array. Okay. Which is the one after the 16, but it's not going to include eight. Okay. Cause it's going to make a list that's non-inclusive of the last spot. So if I print that out, now it gives me exactly what I want, 8, 10, 12, 14, okay? So let me print X to remind us what it is, okay? There it goes, and then I'm going to make Y equal to X 
4 to 8. Okay, and then I can come down here and print y, and that does what the example asks me to do. Okay, so finally I do have a length here. Sorry, I skipped ahead. Um, there's often you'd like to know um, about the length, the shape, uh, the size of these arrays, um, and um, there's a bunch of useful functions for doing this. Okay, so here let me run these examples. Uh, maybe I'll just run the whole guy uh, one more time. So <clears throat> here I'm going to create an array, okay, that goes um, uh, counts but it goes from three to twenty-one, counting by threes. So I print x right here, three up to eighteen, okay, and I create um, a and b matrix, which are uh, two different you know two D arrays or matrices um, that are different sizes from this guy, okay. And if I want to find the length of all of these, I can use that function I told you about earlier, the length function, all right? And that will tell me the number of total uh, elements in my array for this one. And for the matrices, it will tell me the number of rows of the matrix, okay? The number of rows down. So length A will tell me three, and length B will tell me two. So it's really useful this length function for a 1D array, um, it's maybe confusing to remember that this is only the number of rows. So what's really nice is for a NumPy array, you know, this length, this works for anything. It works for lists, tuples, arrays, okay? Um, but for a, for a NumPy array, I can use this shape function, numpy.shape. And shape will give me, a, it will return a tuple that gives me the size of all the dimensions. So for a 1D array, it just will tell me 6. Um, and then for these, it will tell me 3, 2, and 2, 3. Okay, because this is a 3 by 2 matrix, and this is a 2 by 3. Okay, Y 2 by 3, or Y 3 by 2, that's 3 rows, 2 columns. Okay, 2 rows, 3 columns. So this is rows, columns. And as a general rule, that's always the order that things come in, rows, columns. Okay. Uh, finally, if I want to know the total size, the total number of elements in the entire thing, I can use numpy.size. And you see here that that will give me 666 six, six, because there's six elements in each of these. Okay, so that's some uh, basics of the array uh, elements. Um, I'm going to delete that guy because, okay, so that's just a little bit about the, uh, the basics. Um, so with that, um, I think I will close the video and uh, hope that this was useful.